Um, have you gone through any shame in yeah. in the creative process? Has, has, how does it manifest in the creative process? Um, I think it manifests in um, in just writing things and then crossing them out over and over again and then <laughs> oh. overthinking everything and then thinking, oh yeah, this sounds really good. And then I do this thing where like, you know, I'll record it and then the next day I wake up and I always listen first thing after like sleeping you know, on it, and then the next day I'm, I start completely second guessing everything, oh. even if I like really love something. But I think that a lot of that has less to do with like what I've created and more to do with sometimes I go through these moments where I'm constantly criticizing myself from someone else's point of view, which is so silly because I'm not in anyone else's mind. Uh -huh. So I'm like creating the dialogue for what someone else would say if they heard it uh -huh. and letting that impact my own music. Mm. And that's a really dangerous thing to do. You're yeah. creating imaginary critics. Yes. And I think we do that in a way to sort of stave off the responsibility of like, well, yeah, this is my creation, right? Yeah. And, and um, we're putting it out in someone else's hands, whether it's actual critics or it's the imaginary critics or it's just someone who you, you didn't create the music for. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people. Even the best-selling albums in the world sell what? I mean, these days, the, yeah. um, two million copies? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, those are good numbers. Right, two million is yeah. amazing, yeah. right? I mean, and if you sell two million copies, you're not even reaching 1% of the U.S. audience. That means, what's Derek Sivers say? Um, uh, one of our favorite authors. Proudly he, exclude. Yeah, proudly exclude 99% of people because you're creating for the 1%. Like, this is the actual, this is the good 1% here. Right. <laughs> the 1% that you're creating for. Yeah. And, and finding that that small sort of you know, group of people, Seth Godin might call it a tribe. Mm -hmm. But like, find... True fans, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Kevin Kelly thing with, with, with true fans. And... And sometimes you just sort of stumble upon those 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 fans by creating what has been meaningful to you. Yeah. Not meaningful to the imaginary critic. And that's exactly it. Like I this I always say this over and over again. Like if I believe it, you'll believe it. So if it means something to me, then it will eventually probably connect to somebody else. And so my favorite records that I've released, like my favorite songs that I've written were true and anytime I ever walk into a session because I also write for other artists anytime I ever walk into a session and I let myself go down the path of creating a scenario that I can't relate to I never end up loving the song mm.